Okay, so this is what I saw. I saw the globe, the earth, and then I saw a giant eight ball where they shake them up and it gives you an answer to a question, yes or no or whatever. So that was not what I was expecting God to say after seeing this eight ball, but that's what I heard. A mismanagement of funds, society's downfall. And then I heard, Hey y'all, this is Troy Black. So I have a prophetic word to share with you today. And I've actually got two separate words. One is about an international gang. And then the other word has to do with funds in the government being misappropriated. And then I've also got a word of encouragement for you today from the Lord. So before I read these two prophetic words, the Holy Spirit's just leading me to kind of give the end before the beginning and to read this prophetic word of encouragement for you. So I'm gonna read this and I believe that the Holy Spirit is gonna be speaking to individuals about this as I share. So this is what I heard the Lord say. This was back on February 20th. He said, it takes faith to take it to the next level. Faith that I will provide for you but also faith that the seeds you plant won't be wasted. Then I heard nothing is wasted that is following the leading of my voice in your life. So we see a lot of waste on the earth today in the world, whether in governmental structures or just society itself and the way people use things. But the Lord is saying here, and I just sense this from the Holy Spirit, that nothing that I'm doing in you and through you is wasted. Let me show you what I'm actually doing, what I'm actually using this for what I'm actually using this time for, what I'm actually using this day for. The Lord is saying, if you'll open up your eyes and allow me to show you, things are going to be revealed to you in this day and hour that you didn't even dream of could be possible. I hear the Lord saying there's a movement of my spirit upon the earth today where I'm taking my people and I'm transplanting them from existing in the natural plane to existing in the spiritual and working everything out of that space, doing everything from that place to where people are going to ask them the question, how did you do this? How did you pull this off? And the only response my people will be able to give, and I hear this from the Lord, is God did this through me. This wasn't my doing. This was God. And I just hear the Lord reminding me of that verse. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. And I hear the Lord saying this, let me take your little today and turn it into much for my glory, for my kingdom purposes. I can do it. I hear the Lord saying, I can do it. Now I've got these two words of knowledge to share with you. And then I'm going to go back and revisit this message. But for some reason, the Lord wanted me to share that up front with you today. I believe that God is going to be encouraging hearts today. So I'm going to start by sharing this prophetic message about government funds that I heard back on February 20th. After that, I'm going to follow up with a message about this international gang. Okay. So what I saw on February 20th was a vision from the Lord. And I saw this vision while in a time of worship and prayer. If you need confirmation about any of these prophetic words or words of knowledge, please just take this to the Lord in prayer and say, Holy Spirit, is this from you? And don't say that to try to prove a point, but rather say that with a genuine heart, a genuine willingness to listen to what the Lord says. And then I believe God will be faithful to confirm the things that need to be confirmed. Okay, so this is what I saw. I saw the globe, the earth, and then I saw a giant eight ball where they shake them up and it gives you an answer to a question, yes or no or whatever. With the eight, it was facing upward and away, and it was about a third the size of the earth. And then I heard the Lord say, a mismanagement of funds. So that was not what I was expecting God to say after seeing this eight ball, but that's what I heard. A mismanagement of funds, society's downfall. And then I heard people are playing with the money as if it doesn't mean a thing and they are risking lives because of it. A mismanagement on a corporate level among nations. And then I heard this is several branches of government that have misconstrued the reason they are there. They are no longer doing the job they were meant to do. Now they are just spending taxpayers dollars and the funds that should be available in order to lend a hand to those in need are not. Then I heard the Lord say, my church is going to have to step it up in the days that are coming to stop thinking of oneself and to start thinking of the needs of the less fortunate, the needy. So God may be speaking about one nation more than others or a couple nations you know, more than others, but I believe he's also speaking in general about this happening in many nations and many places on the earth today. But I heard the Lord say this next. He said, people are still trying to do this as a whole And I believe he's talking about taking care of the needs of others through government systems. And then he said, but pretty soon the money just won't be there. It's not going to work the way it used to. 
And then he said, a mismanaging and relocating of funds to serve one's own needs instead of the needs of the people. Now, this is what I shared earlier, but I'm going to restate this. It takes faith to take it to the next level. Faith that I will provide for you, but also faith that the seeds you plant won't be wasted. See, God is not going to waste anything that we hand to him in obedience, even if it looks like it got wasted on the flip side. Even if we say, well, I, I gave to this place that you asked me to, God, and look what they did with it. They wasted it. But that's not how the Lord sees it. When If we're being obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit, to what God is asking us to do, it wasn't wasted. And we might not see what God did with it, but he did something and he was able to use it. And then the Lord said, nothing is wasted that is following the leading of my voice in your life. So I'm going to read a few verses here, and then I'm going to share that word about the international gang but as I read these verses, my encouragement to you, and this is what the Holy Spirit encouraged me with while I was reading these verses, is not to look at them through the lens of some of the things maybe we've heard before about these verses, but rather to take a step back and try to look at them objectively. Because I hear the Lord saying this, I have something to share with you, my people, through the word right now that you haven't heard as many times as you should have. So this is Luke 6, 38. Jesus says, give and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. I know most people have probably heard somebody teaching about giving to the work of the ministry and using this verse to justify that or, or to back up that teaching, and that's okay. Yet, at the same time, I believe if we look at the context of this verse, and I believe this is what God is trying to communicate today to us, if we look at the context, Jesus is actually not speaking about ministry necessarily, but rather he's speaking about those who are in need. Okay, look at this, Luke 6, 30. This is only eight verses before that. Give to everyone who asks of you, and whoever takes away what is yours, do not demand it back. Treat people the same way you want them to treat you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners in order to receive back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High. For he himself is kind to ungrateful and evil people. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. Now, Jesus is not talking specifically about giving to ministries here, although that's oftentimes the context we see this verse used. He's talking about giving to those in need, but he takes it a step further and he's actually talking about giving, not just to those we know and love and trust who are in need, but even to go so far as to give to those who we would consider our enemies who are in need. Now, am I saying it's wrong to support ministries? No, I'm not saying that, okay? First Corinthians 9 talks about if somebody sows spiritual things, they should be able to reap material things back, right? There should be some sort of support for ministry, but also those who proclaim the gospel are able to get their living through the proclaiming of the gospel. First Corinthians chapter 9, I encourage you to go read it. Yet at the same time, the emphasis in scripture when it comes to giving is not always giving to the work of the ministry, although that is there, but a lot of times it's giving to those who are in need, especially those in the body of Christ, but also giving to others as well. Look at Romans 12, 10. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love, give preference to one another in honor, not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, watch this, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints practicing hospitality. So we shouldn't just show up to church and be kind to other believers. We shouldn't just invite other believers into our home. We shouldn't just teach other believers the word and encourage each other, sharpen each other. The word says we should be contributing to each other's needs. So if there's a fellow brother or sister in Christ that you know of who, who needs help, and I've seen this happen before, where somebody will need help and they'll go to the church for help and everybody in the church will talk about it and be like, man, this person is so needy. And we don't always see what happens behind the scenes, but sometimes we end up talking about the need, but then we expect the church organization to fill the need or to fix the need when really we are the body of Christ and we have an opportunity in that moment 
to love someone with the love of Christ and to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And it even extends beyond the church building. If there's somebody who's hungry and in need, or there's somebody who we can help and they don't know Jesus, helping them, even if they're on the other side of the political spectrum from us, even if they are wrong about God, you know, even if they're an atheist, even if they believe completely different than we do, even if they've offended us, even if they've spoken out against us, whatever it is, if we love them with the love of Christ by meeting that need, all it does is open up a door of opportunity for us to share Jesus with them. And that's always a good thing. And that's what it truly looks like to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Romans 12 goes on to say this in verse 20, it says, but if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink for in doing you will heap burning coals on his head. So the purpose here is not to heap burning coals, right? The, the purpose is to help them and give them the opportunity. And it's going to come down to once they have the opportunity in their hands to receive Jesus, they do get to decide if they come to him or if they reject him, right? Is That's what it's saying. But it's our job not to reject them, but rather to give them the opportunity to love them with the love of Christ. Does that mean we give away all of our resources today at the drop of the hat? Not necessarily, but it does mean that every single time the Holy Spirit asks us to give, that we have an open hand and we're willing to say yes. And I believe that God can do great things through that, that mindset and, and that attitude. And so this is a prophetic word of knowledge I heard about the international gang. It's kind of strange. I heard this March 24th, but I, I heard the Lord say an international gang, a ring of thieves on international waters, but based in one nation. And then I heard about to be swept out into the open, into an ocean of hurt. So I believe this could be potentially related to the word I shared earlier, you know, about mismanaging of funds and stuff. It may not be, but it's kind of the same concept, you know, something on a very high level of influence being mismanaged, right? But I heard the Lord say this today about the same word from last night. He said, discovering that the criminal classes can reside even among the highest of societal rank. And then he, he said this that same night, he said, caught in the act, a desperate plea, a finding out of hidden motives. And then he said, the sanctity of life and all it entails, the sanctity of life and all it entails. So I believe that gives us kind of a clue as to which direction this word is pointing. And I got this impression that this was going to be happening around a month from the time that I heard it. So I'm just going to share that as an impression. But this is the last thing I heard the Lord say. He's talking about this international gang, right? And he had referred to them as like the criminal class, right? But then he said this, he said, that's never how they would classify themselves, but it's true. So he's saying they don't even see themselves that way. What does the word say? And man, this may hit some people as as harsh, and I don't mean it to land that way. But if the Holy Spirit can use this in your life, please let him do that. And there's grace with this, and there's the love of God. But, you know, the word says to those who know what is right and don't do it, to them it is sin. You know, so there's an opportunity that the Holy Spirit gives us. And listen, y'all, if we've messed up in the past, there's grace for us today. You know, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The love of Jesus covers a multitude of sins. But if we constantly say no to what the Holy Spirit is asking us to do, y'all, we're not setting ourselves up for a greater measure. And we're not setting ourselves up to be in a place where God can actually trust us with the resources and the things that he wants to use us to do for others. So I would encourage you today to have an open hand, to let the Holy Spirit move and just to say yes. And listen, when you take that step of faith, here's what's gonna happen. When you take that step of faith and you say, Lord, I don't get to control where these resources go, but I'm, I'm gonna do what you're asking me to do with them. Here's what's gonna happen is you're gonna see a miracle on one end or the other. And it's either going to be with the resources that you have, with what's coming in, or it's going to be on the other end, which is even a better place to see it, which is you're going to see God move in someone else's life. And someone else is going to be drawn closer to Jesus than ever before. So I hope and pray that this landed okay. You know, that wasn't, it wasn't too heavy of a message, um, but I love y'all so much. I'll see you next time.